It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. So Bob, there are a lot of financial falsehoods out there that we see many people mistaken as truths. Believing some of these myths can actually be very detrimental to your financial health. And one that I think about a lot right now is if you put money in the bond market or take it out of stocks and put it into bonds, that's definitely going to reduce risk in your portfolio. And that's not necessarily true. You know, Rod, the truth is time passes every day and markets operate and they don't care what you think. And markets are volatile. So by changing your mix of stocks and bonds, you can reduce volatility, but you can't eliminate it. I mean, it's a part of the market. Well, the other problem is, and we talk about this on the show all the time, is the way you own your bonds is a big deal. Like owning bond funds right now, I would argue, is very, very risky. So you might be thinking you're taking risk out of the portfolio buying bond funds, but a lot of times you're actually adding risk, and that's going to be a rude awakening. That's going to be a real rude awakening, right? Because when you have a bond fund, you don't have an investment that actually has a guarantee of giving you your money back, right? That's why you buy a bond, right? Because it comes due. The problem with bond funds is there's no date where you get all your money back. Yeah, so I think the definition of safe money is there's a day in the future, you know, you're going to get the return of your money, not just return on your money. And a bond fund definitely doesn't do that. And a lot of the paper that they buy in these portfolios are what we call junk bonds. So you think you're buying a safe portfolio when you're really buying what we would call junk. And I don't think I ever want to have junk in my portfolio, Bob. No junk in a trunk, buddy. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's a good euphemism. I like that. That's a good slogan for not owning bond funds. Hey, right. It's not just you know low volatility, but you know another big myth out there is you think you're going to need less income, not more income when you retire because you're no longer working. Now, how foolish is that? <laughs> we know from our clients, you're probably not going to spend less. Most of our retired clients are spending at least 100% of their income, Bob. Like You need to be planning for that because Let's face it, retirement's fun. You know, you want to spend some money. You're going to do a lot of things you weren't doing when you're working, and that's going to cost you some money. Hey, Rod, would you do me a favor Thanksgiving? Would you go over the plan with mom and explain to her that we want to spend less when we retire? <laughs> no way. <laughs> that's not going to work. Uh, thanks a lot, pal. You got to let me take that bullet myself, huh? <laughs> Yeah, the problem is, right, when you go into retirement, you start to travel more. And when you're traveling and you don't have to worry about work or getting back to the office, you end up staying longer. And because there's so many people traveling, it costs more, right? And then you have shopping. You can shop 24-7. Do you know there's UPS trucks coming down the road? Actually, there's postal office, U.S. postal office trucks driving down the street every Sunday now. Have you ever seen a post office worker work on a Sunday? No, I mean, it's a uh, you know, sign of the times for you with a 24 7 economy. But the other thing, too, is I mean, you have grandkids now that you may want to spoil. There's other things. Whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute. Who has grandkids? <laughs> other people, Bob. Other people. Oh, okay. All right. So that's true. Yeah. You want to spoil your grandkids. You want to you shop more taxes. Let's face it. You have to have a plan where you're going to plan for more income. You're not going to need more income because you have higher expenses in retirement. That's the rule of thumb. That's something everybody should wrap their mind around right now. So having an income plan is definitely critical in knowing exactly how much income you're going to need, which probably is going to be more than you think. But the other part of that equation is, where's the income going to come from, right? You know, when that paycheck stops, you really have to figure out how you're going to draw from your portfolio, how you're going to do it tax efficiently, and, you know, how you're going to generate that income. These are the critical things you have to start thinking about now. You know, I think the most uh, critical analysis that we do for almost everyone is the income analysis to show not only what income they have right now, but whether or not it's adjusted for a cost of living adjustment. In other words, does it does it go up with inflation? Are you going to have enough money to overcome the cost of living increases in your lifetime? If you don't have that sitting there right now, that's something everyone should get immediately. Yes. And that's why if you have a pension, a lot of times those pensions pay the same amount every year. It's not accounting for the cost of living. And a lot of these annuities, Bob, where they promise you income for life, well, it's the same amount of income every year and your cost of living is going up. So that's a lot of times it's not the right solution to make sure that you're going to have a portfolio of income that you can't outlive. 
Yeah, it's a dirty little secret, Rye, that uh, annuities, number one, the income is taxable. So you put after-tax money into an investment that now you have to pay tax on again, and it doesn't adjust for inflation. And right now, every one of you, the biggest risk in your life is inflation, the cost of living in- increases, not volatility, not anything else. It's that cost of living increase that you really need to plan for. Yeah, which also means don't be sitting in cash right now. You might be sitting with way too much money in cash, earning very little, but that money is not growing. It's the cost of living. And that's something you really, really have to start looking at. You know, you're losing money sitting in cash. And the other part of that, Bob, we're just talking about taxes, is a lot of us think that we get into retirement, we're going to be in a lower tax bracket, but that's not necessarily the case. A lot of times our income bracket can actually go up in retirement. Yeah, that's a buzzkill, right? <laughs> that's definitely a buzzkill. You know, what happens is your tax bracket could actually drop. So maybe you're paying 25%, you drop to 23%. But the big tax is what we call the marginal rate. You know, when you get that additional income, maybe from Social Security or the money you have to take out of your um, and retirement plans, right? We're distributing a ton of money right now to our clients because they have to take what's called the required minimum distribution. And that could push your marginal bracket up to as high as 40%, right? Yeah. So we talked about this on the show a lot in the last couple of weeks, but your retirement plans are ticking tax time bombs because it's 70 and a half. You have to start taking that income out and that can jack your tax bracket up to a much higher level. So if you can do some proactive planning ahead of time, you can alleviate that tax bill later. So I'll put that caveat out there, Bob. You know, There's a good chance your taxes could be higher in retirement, but if you plan ahead of time, your taxes definitely could be lower in retirement. Hey, Rod, could you say that over like five times, ticking tax time bomb five times in a row real fast? <laughs> it's hard enough to say it once for the show and make it sound articulate. So, Yeah, if that's but, not a tongue twister, I don't know what is. But uh, it's certainly a problem if you haven't done the right planning. And that's the other thing. You know, you won't, you know, even though there's great technology out there now, you've got, uh, you know, at Fidelity now, we have no transaction cost, right? A lot of the investments we use have no internal cost. So, you know, technology is out there and you think, wow, I can do it all on my own. You think that's the case, buddy? That's the other thing, too. I think there's so much information out there. There's so much technology out there now. You can run calculators online. You get different pieces of advice. It's almost like paralysis by analysis. So I think you know having one professional or somebody that can guide you, because there's a lot of ways you can cut a cake, but you need a system and put a system in place. And a lot of times, just searching on your own can just be overwhelming, and you're going to end up making no decisions. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free, and you can download it right now by texting the word BULLISH, that's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's texting the word bullish to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. Just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555 555- 888 or check out the show notes for the episode at bbullish.com for a link. Here's this week's spotlight on no pain, no gain. We have a very, very special guest on the show. My brother, Bob's son and financial advisor at Payne Capital Management, Chris Payne. Good to have you on the show this morning, brother. Hey, brother. It's good to be here. And you're right. I am special. <laughs> is that special in quotes? I mean, uh, how do we special here? Very special, Chris. Very special. <laughs> That's right. You uh, this... you translate that how you see fit. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> well, Chris, this is our spotlight segment, and you know, each week we dissect a real financial plan to uncover the flaws or what we call pain points. Again, it's about P A Y N E, so that our listeners can avoid the same mistakes with their planning and investing. And you worked on a case recently. Why don't you break down this case for our listeners and and let us know what you did here to get this couple on their path to financial freedom. All right. Sounds good. So, you know, this is a very interesting case as all my cases are, but this one's particularly interesting. So, you know, the one thing I always try to do, I shouldn't say always, I always do this. I always find out first and foremost, what each person is trying to accomplish with their money. Like what are their personal financial goals? And, you know, maybe not necessarily financial, but, you know, emotional goals, material goals, you know, so right up front, I always want to understand what's driving all this. And for this particular person, their biggest concerns were that they wanted to reduce risk, 
They wanted to reduce the amount of taxes that they're paying. And then finally, they wanted to stop managing the portfolio on their own. So the first thing I said, I said, well, you know, why do you want to reduce risk? Why is that important to you? What does that mean to you? And they said, well, I think right now my portfolio is very risky. You know, I've done really well the last 10 years. I got lucky back in 2008 and pulled out. And since then, I've just done extraordinarily well. And I can't really explain why, but I think that my portfolio is, is very risky at this point. And I'm going into retirement. So having a portfolio that's a lot less risky makes more sense to me. You know, in case there is a market pullback, I don't want to lose a lot of money. So wait a minute, Chris, I'm confused. They pulled out in 2008. How did they make any money? Well, they got back in. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry, right. I left that part that out. That makes so sense. Important detail. They pulled their money out in 2008, and then they reinvested it. So sorry okay. about that. So is it more along the lines of, I'd rather be lucky than good here in terms of them getting back in and realizing that they got lucky as opposed to it was some gifted insight into the future or what was their thought process there? It's definitely the, uh, the former. She knew that, that she got lucky and she didn't know why and she didn't want to get into that position again because she felt that, as with most people, luck can sometimes run out. Yeah, well said. So, Chris, how old is this couple? Uh, they are in their early 60s. And, and, just, and, you know, they said they, they made a lot of money and they must be pretty heavily weighted in the stock market. Very heavily weighted. As a matter of fact, like probably 99% of the cases that come to our door, most of their money is in large cap U.S. stocks. Yeah, and I find that interesting because we all think of ourselves as being moderately conservative. But then when we look at these portfolios, they're, they're actually extremely aggressive. And, um, you know, we don't realize these things in, in, unless we have hindsight, right? Risk is something that's only recognized in hindsight. So, they, they're sensing that they're taking more risk than necessary, and that's, that really came to you at the right time, I would think. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the one thing that was really heavily communicated to me was that they, they were very fearful. You know, if the market mm. pulls back, you know, that's really, I think that's that's really going to derail what our plans are. Is, is exactly how they put it to me. Yeah, and it, you know, the truth is that that's actually true. It would derail their plans. I mean, how many people we know how to go back to work after the market crashed in two thousand and eight? You know, they completely saw their plans derailed. And I think that's the good point, Bob, you made here. And Chris is what this investment analysis spreadsheet does. It shows you where that hidden risk is. Because when the market's going up like it has, you're not really aware of the risks that are actually in the portfolio. And the, you know, the question is, if it goes under the stress test, the market goes down, how well is your portfolio going to hold up? And this portfolio, based on this analysis, would not hold up very well. Yeah, exactly. And I would say even back in 2008, had they stayed in, they probably would have taken close to a 40% hit. I mean, that'd be millions of dollars looking at the size of this portfolio. And no one wants to see their portfolio go down by millions of dollars when they're retired. That's just like what Bob likes to say, a buzzkill. I feel like that'd be way more than a buzzkill. That's that, that might even be a, a financial life killer. Yeah, no, I think um, you know what I like to do when I sit with someone who's just meeting me for the first time and they're aggressively invested like this is I take a red pen and I cross out their, you know, seven million and show them what forty percent down looks like and write that number on the statement. Boy, oh boy, I tell you, that gets people's attention. And you know, it's funny you mentioned that, Bob. That's exactly what we did. I actually took their their total value of the portfolio and I said, this is what would happen. Well, you know, I think that the interesting thing is that the proposed portfolio, what you recommend that they do, uh, not only reduces their risk, but it looks like they're going to increase their cash flow by over a hundred thousand a year. Is that right? That's absolutely correct. So and not only that, the more income, it's also and I think that's exactly what we all want in retirement. Exactly, and and not even that. It's also going to reduce their. It's also going to reduce their tax liability by using tax-free municipal bonds. So, right, you know, I know a hundred thousand may not sound like a lot to some people. It sounds like a lot to me. Do you have an extra hundred thousand you'd like to give me every year? <laughs> that must be a rhetorical question because the answer is no, Bob. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, just checking. But you know, it doesn't matter whether it's ten thousand or hundred thousand or or quarter million dollars. Increasing cash flow, which is a cash flow that's going to be repeatable and dependable and actually go up every year. Boy, I'll tell you what, that's that's really what you want to think about when you're in that distribution phase of your life once you're in retirement. Yeah, absolutely. And not only that, but compounding it over the next 20, 30 years makes a huge and drastic difference. You know, I, I, I see that part of your analysis, Chris. If they just continue, if they get that additional cash flow and they compound at the average rate of return, in 20 years, they're going to have an additional $4 million. Yeah, I think that's. I think we can all agree that's a very big number, and uh, that can that can purchase a lot of vacations and, and many other things that this couple really wants to do You know, once they stop working. Yeah, so income's predictable, capital gains aren't. They were smart enough or lucky enough to get aggressively invested. Boy, did they meet you at the right time. Absolutely. Well, you know what I always say? You get a better outcome with income. I think what I like about this, Chris, is you're less reliant on the ups and downs of the market and you're more reliant on predictable income that comes in every single year. 
So as Bob likes to say, it's another financial masterpiece. Well done on this. Well, thanks a lot, Ryan. As always, I always appreciate uh, having an all-pain weekend with you and Dad. Hey, it doesn't get better, especially with our special brother guest. Exactly. (laughs) If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so there's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844 752 6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844-752-6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. Hey, thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on the show, Check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting BeBullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, Be Bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.